Hi guys, today I am going to be trimming boxwoods and more specifically the boxwood hedge behind me and I'm really excited about it because it's the first time since planting it three years ago that I'm going to give it a little bit of a haircut. These are uh, green velvet boxwoods. They grow roughly about two to three feet tall and wide. They like to grow more in like a spherical shape or like a rounded shape. And I want to start training them now to a more of a head shape, more upright and more flat on top. And I think this is a good time of year to do it. I'm in Maryland zone 7A and I usually like to trim boxwoods when I know that the temperature is steadily going to be above freezing at night, more so like around 40s in the 40s at night and 60s, 70s during the day, because I don't want to make any fresh cuts on the boxwoods and then expose those cuts to any severe weather changes. Like if we get like a sudden drop and like we get like a frost or it spikes up and we get uh, really high heat, I don't want to expose the cuttings to that because they'll either get a little bit of like uh, frost burn or sun scorch and you don't want that. So I've been watching the weather and we are pretty much consistently well above like 40s at night and we're actually in the 70s to 80s during the day. So I think this is like my last week or two before I missed the window because I did notice that on my weather app <clears throat> that I saw Next, I think in like 10 days, we're going to spike up to 90 degrees for a day or two. And that is too hot to be trimming boxwood. So I think I've got, you know, just a little bit of time left. And that's why we're going to be tackling it today. So let me show you what uh, the boxwoods look like and what I'm going to use and what we're going to do. These are the boxwoods that I'm going to be trimming up today. They go up the walkway and then all the way around the corner to the gate and they're just looking so good right now. They're just this beautiful green. There's no uh, damage or anything in them, but you can see they have gotten a little bit uh, woolly and scraggly, and I kind of want to just go in and just nip the tops and nip the sides so they're kind of like a little bit straighter because I have noticed too, like when it rains, the weight of the water is kind of uh, taking some of these longer branches like right here and they're kind of starting to lean and I don't want them I don't want them to kind of just end up in this position or a little bit out of shape so I want to kind of keep them a little bit uh, tidier uh, now so when we do get our rains uh, they they hold their shape and they go all the way around To there and that's our little project for today so here are the tools that I'll be using today I'm going to be using these 17 inch uh, hedge trimmers and my little hand pruners this I just wanted to bring out to show you these are just manual hedge clippers kind of like a pair of giant scissors I have used them before for smaller projects or if I'm uh, trimming up like an individual boxwood over here but for a hedge, I kind of prefer the actual hedge trimmers. It just makes it go a little faster. And the hand pruners I'm going to use right around where the walkway bends because there's a gas line right there. That's where the gas meter is. And I don't want to use these. I just want to go in and just ever so slightly just nip a few of the branches and just take care of them that way. I also wanted to mention too that um, for this particular job, I'm not going to be putting down any type of like a drop cloth or anything to collect the clippings because it's just going to be such a minuscule amount. I'll probably just come back around with like a blower and just blow them or just pick them up by hand. But if I were to be trimming up something like a hedge like this, I would definitely lay down something around here to pick up all of this because this is a more established hedge and there there's going to be a lot more clippings on the ground and it's just going to make it a lot harder to kind of pick everything up so if you put a drop cloth or anything down you can let all the clippings just kind of fall scooch it away and just dump it but for this little hedge we don't need any drop cloth or anything we'll just blow it up all right guys here we go
this is pretty much what uh, I cut off. It wasn't a whole lot. Just wanted to kind of cut the tips off and the sides a little bit. fits into one little scoop. And here they are with a fresh haircut looking all nice and neat and tidy. And I didn't do any hard pruning. I just went in and kind of just lopped off the top a little bit, just a couple inches, and just kind of sheared the front and the back uh, just a couple inches too. And I didn't mess with the sides because as I said, I do want this to form into a hedge, so I'm hoping that they eventually will grow together a little bit more. Some of them are a little bit bigger than the others, and so like these right over here around the corner, they're already touching a little bit, which I'm excited about. And this hedge is three years old, so I will try and put a picture up of when I first planted it, and these were so tiny and they've really grown. I'm excited about it. And this whole project took about 45 minutes start to finish, which I think is really good time. Again, I didn't take too much off. I just wanted to kind of nip the tops and the sides and just kind of encourage, you know, more branching and growth, which will eventually uh, make the plant, the shrub, a little bit fuller and denser, and they will eventually grow together and we'll have a beautiful green hedge. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next video. Bye.